Good morning, my soccer universe is going to be a two-part video because um, I have seen only results uh, of the big leagues yesterday, but I haven't really seen any um, highlights, so I want to do that. I took the morning off. But I want to talk about the game that I saw yesterday for a little, uh, which was the cup semi-final between Lask and Rapid Vienna. Um, as you know, I'm from Linz, I'm a Lask fan, so Austrian um, action. It was great to be in the stadium, it was even greater that it was me and my wife going, um, actually have, having fun. I mean, we didn't necessarily like that uh, so much smoking going on or whatever. We had to rent all our clothes and we also didn't like that it got very, very, very late. The game itself, I mean, Lask took a lead in the 15th minute, 15th, 16th minute, uh, through a shot by Goetinger and had chance after chance, especially in the first half, should have been at least 2 or 3 nil. Uh, they hit almost the bar and once uh, the uh, goalkeeper saved. It was really only one team playing. Uh, it has to be said like that there was only one team playing and that was Lask and the uh, Rapid was just uh, hanging back there uh, trying to hold on uh, quite some but uh, they held on. In the second half, uh, it's really hard to talk about that but it was ever for 10 minutes Rapid could uh, make the game a little bit more open. Uh, they get a corner kick that uh, got played. The uh, player is standing on the near post, uh, heads it towards the long post and the ball comes in. One, one, another, absolutely nowhere. <laughs> and yeah, game on. I was actually quite confident that Lask is going to score another goal because uh, while they were not as dominant, they still continued to be the much, much better team uh, going forward uh, and again having chances. Um, also, similar to the Milan game the night before, um, there was a chance to make it 2-0 and then uh, right from the, it was not the counter, but just a minute or two later, it's 1-1. Um, but the longer the game went, I mean, um, my wife was kind of saying, why aren't they attacking more? And I, I said, I think they would like to, but at the moment, uh, this is a cup game. Where if you open up too much, uh, you actually risk of conceding, and so the incentive to really uh, launch a major attack is not really there. The, the match got actually heated in the uh, stoppage time when the last player made a pretty bad foul that only got a yellow card. It probably should have been a red. And that incensed the Rapid fans so much, especially one player, the uh, guy who made the uh, equalizer of my going hanger made the uh, goal for Lask. In case you were wondering. Um, just cannot calm himself. He's yelling at the ref, and the ref gives him two yellow cards and sends him off. Uh, at that time, the most shocking thing to me is that the coach hadn't made a single change. He waited until I think almost the 100th minute to make the first change uh, to his team and he only made two changes in the entire team. He just uh, replaced the strikers. Uh, okay, it's good on one side uh, because we, there is a team that works quite well but they got tired and, we had, and there's a pretty big game between against Salzburg on Sunday so I really thought that might be something going there. But yeah, uh, they left. He left it that way. And second half, at the very at, at the very beginning, again huge chances for Lask, um, where they the ball is scraped off the line. I mean, uh, it should have been easily. The goal should have fallen there. It didn't. Then when a goal is scored in the 105th minute, basically last kick of the first half in overtime, there is a goal. It's uh, waved off roof side. I didn't see it. I actually was celebrating until someone told me, you know, it's not a goal. Fuck. Uh, second half, I mean, Rapid down to 10 men. They just defended, defended, and got to penalties. And I knew it goes to penalties. Um, advantage Rapid. And yeah, it went to penalties. And yes, it was advantage Rapid. Um, 
last quit first, which we, I've read not many times is an advantage, although as of late I'm not so sure anymore. Uh, I guess this has to be re-examined, but what really got me is that the penalty shooters was in front of the last fans. And it's always, always amazing. If you have the shootout in front of your own fans, you're gonna lose. Them. And the goalie of Rapid didn't have to do anything. The second, uh, second shooter, James Holland, put it so far to the left, uh, unbelievable. Then uh, Samuel Tete, who has been great for us, especially last season. This season he has been phenomenal and has a bunch of injuries. Put his right over the goal. Uh, Forge, Forge, the Rapid player Bill, uh, afterwards also did it. Uh, put it over the goal, so there was still a chance, but yeah, there was no more misses and Rapid. Goes on to win this on penalties when you really, really don't know how. Soccer is a cruel sport sometimes. I had fun anyway because it was, you know, I was out with my wife, we were outside. I mean, my health was not the great, but my neck is hurting and so on. But yeah, so from that point it, it was great, but um, the result was a little bit gutting. But I take those things much better. Well, I'm gonna watch now some highlights at home. And, wait. and I will let you when I go to work around lunchtime. I will let you know how uh, I think about the rest of the game. I thought there was a crazy cup fight in Germany between Bayern Munich and Heidenheim, a second league team. But I'm gonna tell you all of that uh, in the second part of this video. And yeah, sorry for having another late post, but it's the video. Okay. Hello again, my soccer universe. Now that you've heard my exploits from yesterday of the game that I was and I had the chance to meanwhile watch a few highlights and I'm going to work let's talk about other games from yesterday um let's first stay with cup competitions because sorry um the first one that comes to mind uh, that the big result or well, the first really eye-grabbing result is of course in the German Cup, the FB Pokal, uh, between Bayern and Heidenheim. Uh, that was a crazy game. I actually thought when I looked at the draw that this is typically Bayern luck uh, at home against potentially the weakest team, or at least the team that I haven't heard uh, too much about. Uh, I know Heidenheim is about 160 kilometers away from Munich. I do, but I'm not sure if they're in Bavaria, I think they might be in Baden-Württemberg, I have to check that one. If you know, drop me a comment below. Uh, but I know it, it was a short uh, drive for them. But the game started actually, I mean, um, of course they were uh, not, uh, Bayern did not play necessarily the full first team squad. Uh, it was notably Lewandowski didn't play from the beginning. Uh, and Müller got them, I think, at the 12th, the early goal. And I have to say, I've seen the highlights. Uh, you can find them on YouTube. Uh, they are really great to watch. Um, I want to remember all the names of the players that scored. Um, not from the top of my head. Uh, but I know that Müller scored the first goal. Um, and then, probably a uh, scene that that almost would have decided the game against Bayern. Um, there was a foul on a Heidenheim player who was through to goal. Uh, and the ref initially gives only a yellow card, but then it's he's called to VAR, looks at the booth and he sees, yeah, that would have, he would have been clear on goal. Um, and gives a red card in the 16th minute. The ensuing free kick lands on the crossbar. Uh, so that was already number one uh, big shocker for uh, Bayern. Hoffenheim got their, uh, Heidenheim, not Hoffenheim, Heidenheim got their goal um, to equalize it and they even made it 2-1. They didn't hide away in the big stadium in Munich, uh, quite the opposite. They attacked, attacked, attacked. Absolutely. Uh, glorious performance by Heidenheim, uh, one has to say. And uh, so 
it's 2 1 at the halftime for Heidenheim. Bayern, of course, comes back. Lewandowski comes on. I think Kingsley Coman comes on. Uh, and they uh, quickly get an equalizer and uh, through Lewandowski, I think they. Uh, Lewandowski? I don't know. I know Lewandowski made one goal. Um, they managed to get a 4 2 lead. Everything now for Bayern, one would think. Nope. Uh, Heidenheim comes storming back. Uh, makes it 4 3. Schnatter, I think he, he is the captain. Uh, something like that was his name. Uh, I remember because this is kind of funny, funny sounding uh, name. Probably even in English, but especially in German. Uh, it is kind of funny. Uh, so they come uh, st uh, come back, make it 4 3, and then they get a penalty, make it 4 4. I think this is around the 80th minute that it is 4 4. And you're, you're thinking, is this really gonna turn around? Uh, and the coach even said, once we made it 4 4, we really thought we would win this game. No, they didn't, because of uh, one of those hand ball penalties. Yes, it is there. I really, since the World Cup, I have had a tr I have some trouble with a handball being called. Um, with this outstretched arm or ball and whatever, it, it is, you know, it's the cheapest thing to have war for. It really is the cheapest thing uh, to, yeah, okay, we can we can see that the ball lands on the hand and that's that. Um, so yeah, uh, the penalty. Is given Lewandowski makes it 5 4, and uh, that's how it ends. If you would have bet on 5 4 ahead of the game, you would be rich now. I'm pretty sure. Uh, great performance by Heidenheim, and yeah, Bayern Munich for the 10th time in a row in the German Cup semi final. Uh, the other, uh, other quarter final game that, uh, that was played yesterday was between um, Schalke and Bremen. Which was a scrappy game. Uh, Bremen uh, better of the first half, then really Schalke, uh, absolute uh, dominant phase, and right into the dominant phase. Uh, Werder makes it um, 1 0, and shortly after 2 0, and that kills off the game. Uh, Bremen uh, will also move on in the, in the next round. We already know that Hamburg is going there. And what was the last game? Uh, Leipzig. Is also there. So, gonna be curious about the draw. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie if I'm saying I really would like to see uh, Bremen Hamburg uh, semi final. Uh, I saw Coupe de France uh, between PSG and Nantes. I didn't see the other game. I know I will make uh, tonight a big roundup video. Uh, and I, hope, I hope this gets uh, to kind of uh, look at all the results, no, not all in the cup, but also in the leagues, because the other three big countries were playing, having league games. Um, PSG wins it 3 0. They, got, they get a quite early one, uh, goal, but then not, in my opinion, should have gotten a penalty, uh, which they didn't. They were well in the game, had their chances. Um, PSG gets a relatively cheap Pepper penalty that Mbappé converts, but it has to be retaken. So, and then the goalkeeper actually saves it. Uh, and in the end, yeah, they get another penalty uh, after a uh, player got sent off rather stupidly. Uh, and yeah, then Dani Alves makes a really, 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 really nice goal uh, to make it three. But yeah, PSG on to the cup final and rumors are that Neymar will play in that one, so let's see how this will go. Uh, so let's go to other leagues, let's go Spain. Um, I have only seen one highlight and that's why I'm wearing this Valencia shirt. Valencia thoroughly dominating Real Madrid, uh, who probably has a really bad showing this time around. Uh, Zidane's first loss is coming back. Um, like Lask, Valencia can be blamed of not making more goals. They eventually made it 2 0, and then, uh, you know, um, I think Real Madrid got one goal, but not through Mazama. But the 2 1 scoreline is very flattering to Madrid. Valencia thoroughly deserved that win. And 
Alright, yeah. So I have a jersey to wear today. I was actually really a little bit this week, even weekend did not go quite for me so far. So yeah, uh, I don't know that I will sell the Vigo Wesca or a Wesca sell to the Vigo um, and in 3 3 uh, where Celta had actually a 3 1 lead and the Wesca came back and still see how that's of that one. But yeah, uh, the relegation battle in Spain is probably one of the tightest ones in Europe. Um, let's go Italy. I'll finish with the Premier League. Uh, Italy had two remarkable results for me. The, uh, the first one is Empoli beating Napoli 2 1. Haven't seen highlights of that one. And Spal beating Lazio 1 0, uh, which is a result that makes me personally very happy. Uh, because now Lazio, uh, even with the game in hand, will not overtake Milan. That's a big one, but Atalanta is now, they're now level of points with Atalanta, and Atalanta is playing tonight, so. Uh, gotta be interesting, but you know, Atalanta can also go within a point of Milan. Uh, given that Milan is playing on Saturday, Juve. I really hope they are feeling a second string score for the Champions League, but I know that. I know that by Monday I'll be talking that Milan is now basically in uh, fifth or sixth spot and really have to fight for the Champions League. It's just totally disappointing. Totally disappointing at the moment. But you know, you can hit a rough patch, the key is to get quickly out of it. I don't think that any of the other teams will actually um, win out. Sure, I think there's too much still to play uh, in order for, uh, for me to call this. So, yeah, that was going on, um, and then the highlights that I saw were between Fiorentina and uh, at Roma, which was a really weird jer jersey matchup. Uh, Fiorentina in their blue jersey against the red of Roma. Um, I mean, it looked fine, but I would expect Fiorentina and white. Uh, Fiorentina took twice the lead and twice Roma equalized within short uh, time. Muriel probably should have gotten a goal against Roma. Uh, I think he only hit the post at one point. Um, Roma's defense is horrible offensively. I, they can be dazzling if they wanted to, but Roma is really in crisis at the moment. And so the 2 2 against Fiorentina is actually, uh, I would say, a pretty big result for them. And now let's finish, as I said, with the Premier League. Um, Manchester City wins 2-0 at Cardiff and I don't quite get it. Um, they have now a few midweek games, maybe those are the makeups for the, when they were playing the FA Cup, something like that. Uh, but you know, uh, tomorrow evening is already Southampton against Liverpool. I don't know why this is played on Friday, maybe because of the Champions League, but England usually usually don't, don't do that. Let's see. Uh, but that's gonna be kind of a biggish matchup for sure. Uh, yeah, Man City gets, uh, I think, De Bruyne uh, in the sixth minute already had it to nil, and uh, a one nil, and then shortly thereafter it was two two nil at City Plus playing at home. Fortunately, no dropped points uh, for City. I gotta say, I had a City jersey on Monday in my hands, the away jersey, which is really wonderful. Uh, I think what stopped me from buying it is more or less that this season I really want Liverpool to win. And that City jersey is just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, I gotta say. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe I'll get it and maybe then there's a curse on City. Let's see, but you know, it doesn't work like that. Uh, you cannot curse a team that way uh, if you have only positive intentions. Uh, if you have negative intentions, at least that, that's what I, I believe it, it rarely ever works. Um, and then Tottenham opens the new stadium against Crystal Palace. I mean, the stadium looks beefy, every, everything. Really, really nice stadium. Um, it's now, I think, the big Premier League stadium in London made also for NFL games, so um, really interesting what they built there, I gotta say, and Tottenham gets the win, Son scores the first Spurs goal at the new 
stadium, which as yet is, I think, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, and all that White Hart Lane, new or something, uh, version 201, 200, before you, um, you know, get the corporate um, name that it surely will get, which I hate. But uh, if you didn't know, um, the one stadium that I know that uh, got rid of the corporate name was Nuremberg, where a supporter group basically bought the naming rights and they call it Max Morlock Stadium, of course after Max Morlock, a uh, member of the 1954 um, German national team that won the World Cup and uh, absolutely a club legend, which is now double meaning because Nuremberg is in Germany usually called Der Club, the club, uh, which is interesting, so he is a true club legend. Um, I think we should get more like this, but I understand. It's all about money, 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 money. So for that reason, uh, I don't think we'll see many moves in that direction. So yeah, Spurs claw themselves back, snap a nasty losing streak. Um, that I, I don't know now, I don't think, I think our Arsenal had, had, had overtaken them, maybe with that win, they overtake our Arsenal again. There will be a round of video where I'll check on that. But with the Monday night win, our Arsenal was ahead of Spurs, which in itself is a little bit crazy. But then Spurs has now a new stadium, which I gotta say, the, the stand where the rooster is on the top uh, looks so fat. I mean, it looks really, uh, the stadium looks a little bit egg shaped. Uh, the pitch is a little bit more to the side away from that rooster, which looks weird, but you know, I'm sure it's an awesome stadium with a lot of space and all this kind of things in, in, in between. Uh, on the other side, you know, with all those modern stadiums being built, um, there is a certain charm in old stadiums. I heard now that the San Siro is about to be replaced or something like that and that really is hurting because that San Zero is one of those stadiums. I mean they are revamping the Bernabeu, they are revamping the uh, Camp Nou. <sighs> On one side I, I, I understand it but the melancholic side of me uh, longs for the old stadiums, that's for sure. Well, I have no I think those are all the games that I watched highlights of. Uh, so let me know what you thought about yesterday's game. As I said, I'm still a little bit hurting from the last loss, but it's not every, even though it's a loss on penalties, that's not technically no, no, the loss, but they didn't move on to the final. And yeah, um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.